Now, when this foot gets planted into the turf, his body actually keeps spinning, which makes his ankle and foot go into that eversion position. Welcome baseball fans. For those of you that aren't familiar with me, my name is Nick Gallo and I'm a doctor of physical therapy. With this video, we're gonna take a very close look at that nasty collision that we saw Josh Naylor get involved in today and go over briefly as to what could potentially be involved with his right leg injury. Today, we saw Josh Naylor of the Cleveland Indians get involved in a collision on field. And this was a very scary looking collision because of course there was the impact between him and the other player, but after the collision, we saw that his body spun in a very awkward way and his right leg looked like it got tangled up underneath of him. When Naylor landed, we saw his right foot get planted in the turf, but his body weight kept spinning, which resulted in what looked like his right ankle getting twisted severely backwards. Naylor, of course, was carted off of the field and we were awaiting the official report of his injury. That report is in, and as of right now, sources are saying that Naylor is in fact dealing with a fracture in that lower leg, and we are currently awaiting any more details at this time. Now the severity of Naylor's injury was not released to us in terms of the fracture and the exact bones involved were also not released to us but the position that Naylor's foot seemed to go into is known as an eversion position and since some people may not be too familiar with what can exactly be at risk in this position I'm going to go ahead and focus on that in today's video. If you like today's video and you find it informative please hit that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel because I will be making more videos in the future regarding sports injuries, rehabilitation, and other physical therapy related content. Also, if you have any comments or questions, please leave those in the comment section below. Now to start off, I have a model of the lower leg and ankle here. So the two bones that are in the lower leg, you have the fibula, which goes along the lateral or outside portion of the lower leg. And then you have the tibia, and this is the bone that we often associate with as the shin. This bone is going to come on down and it's going to come more medially or towards the inside of the ankle. These two bones that are on the most distal portion of the ankle, these are those bony knots that we feel around the ankle. The fibula actually comes down and makes a bone known as the lateral malleolus and the tibia actually comes down and makes the medial portion known as the medial malleolus. Now, there are some very important motions that are involved at the ankle joint, and they are dorsiflexion, which is where the foot is going to come up in this direction, then plantar flexion, which is the exact opposite motion, where a lot of times people are going to be doing this motion for a calf raise or running or things of that nature. Then, as we flip the model into here, as the foot goes inward like this, this is known as inversion, and this is a very common mechanism for those ankle sprains that we often see in sports. And finally, there's a position known as eversion, and this is exactly when the foot and ankle is going to go in the opposite direction of inversion. Now, on the actual play that we see Naylor get injured on, we see that he makes collision with the other player, and he spins around in the air, and his body weight continues to spin, but we see his right foot get planted into the turf. Now, when this foot gets planted into the turf, his body actually keeps spinning, which makes his ankle and foot go into that eversion position. So eversion is the opposite, once again, of inversion. So the foot plants and his body weight actually takes him into that eversion position. Now, when a person goes into this eversion position, essentially what is happening is it's going to stress all of the structures that are located in the medial or inside portion of the ankle. Now, there are very important ligaments in here that are a group of ligaments that we refer to commonly as the deltoid ligaments. Then, what is involved also is you have muscles and tendons which are also located within this portion of the ankle. And finally, of course, you have that medial malleolus, which is that distal portion of the tibia bone. So, as he lands and we see that his foot goes into eversion, this is greatly going to stress this medial malleolus and all of those structures located medially in the ankle. If a person goes into enough eversion or if this is done with enough force, then what can happen is something known as a malleolar fracture. Now, that malleolus, once again, is that distal portion of the tibia bone. So 
when a person goes into extreme eversion like that, it puts a lot of strain specifically onto this bone as well and can lead to a malleolar fracture, which essentially is just going to be a fracture going across that medial malleolus. And this can also put a lot of strain onto the bone because as a person goes out there into that eversion position extremely, this causes a lot of tension to be placed along this medial malleolus. Now, it's important to say that a person can also have a medial malleolar fracture if they roll the foot the opposite way because this is going to cause compression of that medial malleolus. But generally speaking, when a person is going to go into eversion, this is going to place a lot of strain and tension on that medial malleolus. Now, something that's also at risk, of course, is the lateral malleolus because as you can see here, it's going to place a lot of tension here, but it's going to put a lot of compression along that lateral malleolus. So, of course, he's at risk for a single malleolar fracture, or he's at risk for something known as a bimalleolar fracture, which essentially means that both the medial and the lateral malleolus contain fractures. Now, once again, as of right now, the sources have been saying that there are reports of a fracture, meaning that there is only one, but it's really important to know that when a person goes into that extreme eversion position, you have risks for more than one fracture. Now, it's really important to say that if a person does have a suspected fracture in one of the two bones in the lower leg, then what they will have, of course, is an x-ray, and this x-ray is going to do a very good job to show if there is any cracking or any displacement within that bone. If the displacement is a lot, then the person usually is going to consider having surgery. And this is when they'll do something, generally speaking, where they will put in a rod and some screws to help stabilize and keep the bone together for optimal healing. Once again, we don't know whether or not Naylor is going to be headed for surgery, but it is important to say that if the fracture is bad enough and it is displaced enough, then surgery is an option. Now, generally speaking, for a malleolar fracture, if that is in fact what Naylor is dealing with, then these take anywhere up to about six to eight weeks for that bone to heal properly. Also, it's really important to know whether or not he does have any ligament damage to that medial portion of the ankle because of that really awkward position that we saw him go into. So it's going to be really important that we essentially just follow his case and we know exactly what he is dealing with moving forward so we can get a more accurate time frame for his return to sport. Therefore, it's going to be really important that we just follow Naylor's case moving forward and see the results of his follow-up visits because he will be having follow-up imaging to make sure everything is healing in that ankle. But once again, if I find out any recent information, I'll be sure to update everybody in the comment section. And that's it as of right now regarding Josh Naylor's most recent horrific looking right ankle injury that he suffered after a violent looking collision. Once again, thank you very much for watching today's video. I really appreciate it. If you like today's content, please subscribe to the channel because I will be making more videos in the future. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time.